Well, the handouts that I handed out, a little bit about irises and um, a little diagram of the anatomy of an iris. If you're buying irises online, they'll use terms like standards and falls. Standards are the petals on the top, and falls are the petals on the bottom. The fan is actually the leaves, but the way they grow, you can see they grow like a fan. So the fan usually you means wide your irises. The, the, the iris that bloomed, this would have been the stem from the iris that bloomed this year for me. So this is, and then this one goes. So this one's not going to bloom again. But what the irises do is they make new ones. So for every one iris, you could get two or more new iris. Uh, when you plant an iris, you need it to actually be the rhizome, which is the fleshy part here. These are the roots under here. This is not the root. This is actually more like a storage mechanism, like a bulb would have. So it stores starches in the fleshy part. This is what feeds the plant for the next year to make the blooms. So this piece, unlike a bulb, a true bulb, needs to go on top of the soil. So when you plant an iris, you actually are going to leave the rhizome on top of the soil, and then you're going to dig two little lines or whatever next to it for the roots to go in, and then just sit it up like that, pull them up. The roots go down, but the rhizome itself stays on top of the soil. So this, you're basically going to make trenches, and then sit the rhizome on top, and then put the roots in the trenches. All you have to do is get some mulch. Okay. Put the mulch down on top of the soil. Take your rise on. Just nestle it in. They're sending out their leaves. Now, which means you're going to have leaves all winter. So technically, they're evergreen. They work in reverse. Um, so they start to die back, like this is the stem, and the old leaves, normally we just cut these off, but I wanted to show them to you, um, from this year's flowers. But these are, these are all new. This is all growth that these irises put out since I dug them up, viruses do need to be divided at some point because they, w they do this, they make more, and they crowd each other out. And that for some strange reason, if they see a wall anywhere in the vicinity, they'll just take a beeline right for that wall to make it really, really, really hard for you to dig it out. You've got Japanese Japan. iris, Siberian iris, um, flag iris, or wildflower iris. Um, they can become a little invasive, so you want, you want to watch on those. Maybe you just put them in a pot or something if you want, in a wildflower area. And then Louisiana iris, which everybody refers to as swamp iris. They do not need to grow in water. They can grow in water, but they don't need to grow in water. So Louisiana iris, um, they are, one, a native iris. Um, so they are a true native iris. Bearded iris, or German iris, as they're also called are not native. But if you want to grow native plants, Louisiana iris would be good. They have a flower that is as wide as the bearded irises are tall. Bearded iris, the flowers can be like this long. Um, there's several different types. There's a, a dwarf, an intermediate, and the, the talls, which is mostly what I grow. Um, the talls are anywhere from three to four feet. When, this, when they send up those flowers, they're going to be three or four feet in the air. Um, so they're great for like a background. Any questions? Cool. The iris borer. Okay. The idea of planting the iris above the soil level, okay, is so you don't get iris borer. Iris borer will attack iris that are planted too low. That is the worst thing you can do, other than having no drainage, okay? They, you have to think of them like bulbs. You know, you don't want to put bulbs in a wet, soggy area. Um, they will rot, you know? There is all this starch in here 
It's just going to rot in a wet area. So to prevent iris borer, just raise them all up, you know, get them up out of the ground, and then you'll, you'll uh, pretty much eliminate iris borer. So do you actually add drainage, like pebbles? Or you can. Now, see, uh, when I lived in Locust Valley, the difference was I had iris, and they bloomed, and they were nice. Okay. But when I moved to Huntington and had rocks and sand, basically, um, the drainage, that's what they love. I mean, they bloom. I used to get four buds per plant in Locust Valley. I get 15 now. I mean, that's a happy plant. I have like 12 hours or something. So if you are trying to overcomp, if you want to compensate, maybe you're not getting quite as much sun, so you're not getting quite as many bu uh, buds, then you might want to compensate with a little bit of bone meal or something like that. Never use a high nitrogen fertilizer on irises. You will rot them out. Yes, um, are there variations in when they bloom? Are there earlier and later? Yes, and it actually goes by size. Dwarfs, the mini dwarf bearded irises, um, they bloom for me in like March, April. The intermediate sized iris, they're about, uh, about that tall, and the stems are like really thin. Um, they bloom two, they will actually bloom like a month or so later. And then the tall beardeds, the ones that are like three, four feet tall, they bloom Memorial Day weekend. That's why I open my garden on Memorial Day weekend every year. I know people are busy, but this is what they do. They will bloom for me from Memorial Day weekend through the first or second week if it's cool enough in June. And so that's how you're going to stagger your plants. So when you're, when you're looking in your catalog, you know, and you want certain colors to bloom together, um, they will give you an idea, you know, but it goes, it goes by height, you know. So if you want a purple and a yellow to bloom together, maybe get an intermediate, you know, and two intermediates or Okay, bloom time is dependent, especially with anything from a rhizome or a bulb, on temperature. This year we had a really cool, i.e. wet spring, but cool, it was really cool. My iris has bloomed for me until the middle of June. I mean, I was still, you know, the tallest ones, the latest ones for me, were ending almost in July. I still had irises, which was shocking, but I still had irises in July. What do you feel when you see people cut them off? Okay, um, when the iris, like I said, this is not normal. You would not leave these stems this long. I did it for two reasons. One, because I wanted to label and I wanted to know which color was what. So when I dug them, and, and to just show you what, what, you know, what the stem looks like. No, as soon as they're done, these stems go. How about the leaves? The, no, the leaves you don't cut. The leaves are going to feed the rhizome. This is helps you. Never cut the leaves on irises, never. Not in the fall? Either. Well, when, when they get like this, yeah. yeah, then they're done. Then you then you, then you you can take all these off. Like I said, I left them on just, just really to give you, to show you that this is this year's growth, this is next year's growth. The leaves are all spotted and... Just leave them alone. Just leave them. Just leave them. They're feeding, whether or not, as long as they're green and not yellow, they are feeding that rhizome. Spots and all. So, you, you know, if you're getting spots on your irises, then chances are it, it, it's an air circulation issue. Yeah, Irish fell on the bottom when yes. you said it had the rhizome that... Okay, yeah, so like this was the rhizome that bloomed this year is the end of the stem. Like that? You, yes. There you go, I just cut it. This is not going to do anything for you, okay? Now you have two new plants and you can spread them out. Do you have any tips on if you want to bring it in and how it does a uh, cut flower? Yeah, they don't, they don't do that great. Um, the other irises, the Siberians, the Japanese, Louisianas, um, they are great cut flowers. Tall bearded, not so much. They maybe a day you get at it. I'm trying. Yeah, no, they they just this these stems are um, hollow, and I, I'm I think maybe it's a surface area issue. So when you cut them. They're not gonna draw as much out of a vase. I'm not really sure that they, tall bearders do not make good cut flowers. You want good cut flowers, go with one of the other ones, the Japanese, the Siberians.
Do these other kinds, the Japanese and Siberian, last longer on the stem? My impression is the beard that lasts one day per blossom on the stem. No, my beard is last weeks. I have a leaf bloomer, and my son got so excited, he was about 14, he called up Cornell and Ithaca to tell them that my mother had a new plan to look alike. It's going to be a trade-off because if they're going to put energy into making that second bloom, they are not going to make more. I'm going to thank Anne.